there's so many brands out there that all have their own camps. And the way that you build up a community now is very different than how we had to do it back then. Yeah. So the way you do it now is through Instagram and Facebook and like more social media driven, more social media driven and more ad spend driven. And that wasn't ever anything we were into. So, you know, people go to golf works or they, or, uh, or my golf spy for their, for their reviews now, like there are people that are doing it better than I could. Yeah. And so that's, that's, you know, really the reason why I finally felt like it was okay for me to pick a side. Like I'd been on this for so long where, you know, I got offers to work for everybody, like any golf manufacturer that was out there that had anything to do with putter talk had asked me to come work for them. Right. But it was always like, uh, well, if I do that, I can't stay agnostic and review other people's. But now that that was gone and, you know, forgotten, so to speak, um, you know, I did the NFT project for Nick uh, at, at, at Swag. So how did your yeah. relationship with Swag kind of get started? Obviously, you've known Nick for 20 years. Yeah. How does the conversation begin of, hey, Doug, I think I'd like you on board. It, it was it was a lot different than that. It wasn't a, I'd like you on board. It was, you know, I would often get calls from Nick or texts when he was blowing up like, hey, my website keeps crashing, you know. Can you help me out? Can you help me out? Yeah. And a lot of times it was like, well, you know, I can, but I can't. And here's why I can't. You're using this type of a network and that's not my expertise. So here's somebody that can. Or here's what you need to look for in a developer that can work on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Or you know, shooting ideas back and forth. And, you know, I would send him texts when they did something particularly cool. I'd be like, dude, you crushed that. Like, that was awesome. Um, and so back in February of, of last year, February, or March, um, NFTs were really hot. And I was involved in that because I'd been involved in crypto since, you know, my, my first, yeah, my first Bitcoin purchase was in 2011. Um, my first crypto company was 2018, about the time he was starting Swag. And, um, and I said, you guys should be doing an NFT project. And he, so explain to yeah. the us dummies, and I'm going to say us dummies. Yeah. I know what an NFT is to a point, but explain yeah. to the rest of us what an NFT is. Uh, so think of it as, you can think of it as a number of different things. You can think of it as a piece of art. You can think of it as a membership. Uh, you can think of it as an asset. You can think of it as a stock. So all of those things can be true at the same time. So um, by and large, they are pictures. So people associate in their mind, they think of, they think of NFTs as a picture that you purchase. It's deeper than that in that you can do a lot more with that. So think of it as a, uh, also as a membership to a country club that when you're done with it, you can sell that and transfer it on your own to somebody else that is now a member of that country club. Right. And maybe you made money because it's appreciated in value, or maybe you lost money, but it's depreciated in value, but it was still transferable to a third party. Um, so I asked Swag or, or Nick specifically, like, you guys should do an NFT project. And he said, we, we, we are right now, you know, we're going live like in a few weeks or something like that. And I'm like, can I see it? And he sends it to me and I, I texted him back. I said, who's doing this? Well, I don't know what you mean. Who's doing this? Well, I don't know what you mean. Okay, I'm coming to Chicago. So I fly out to Chicago. Because he's and, not in that normal space. No, but, but NFTs were perfect for Swag's brand. Like you look at all these, these are all skulls. So this is all like typically an NFT is, you know, 3000 versions of the same type of thing just changed a little bit so that everybody's everyone is unique. Um, and that's what they had been doing. So it was really prime for an NFT project. So I, I reached out to Nick and, and then I ended up flying to Chicago, uh, and met with him and sat down and they showed me the art and I said, okay, here's the part you're missing. And there were some stuff that they wanted to do that what they were getting ready for wouldn't have allowed them to do. Mm. And there are different networks that you can do NFTs on. They were doing one on a tertiary network that not a lot of people knew about. So that would have been hard to get eyes onto it. So there were just a number of things that I'm like, look, I can help you with this. And I do consulting for companies like this. So let me help. 
So I got involved with the project and uh, we, we took the art that they had and started over with the creation and with the curation and the QA of the art and then the smart contract and then building a website that would interact with that. Like those were all the, the parts that they were, that they were missing that they were going to do later. So yeah. today, if you own a swag skull, like this weekend, I'm going to be announcing that anybody with this one particular trait will get an hour early access to buy this head cover that we're going to release next week. Now, typically on a swag drop, things last about 15 to 25 seconds. So we'll, we'll make 300 head covers, 200 head covers, 50 head covers. It changes every time. Yeah. We will announce on social media. Here's here, you know, here's the cover that we're going to release this week. Um, and we do some cool shots with it, you know, go, goes live at 11 AM central on when or on Thursday. And so if I watch the traffic on our website, we will have thousands of people, literally thousands of people. Refreshing, 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 refreshing. Myself included, for the yeah. record. <laughs> yeah. And then as soon as they see it pop up, buy now, mm. pay now, and hope they get it. But more often than not, between that add to my cart and check out, it's sold out. So what we did with the NFT project was we set aside. So I'll pick a trait, you know, this weekend uh, or maybe multiple for this drop that we're doing on Monday um, for President's Day. And I've been given an allocation of, you know, X amount that I can give to NFT holders. And so I'll pick traits that equal that amount. And anybody that has an NFT with those traits can buy it early and they have an hour to do so. And they're guaranteed that they'll get one. Mm. So if you have one in your wallet and you go to this website, you connect your wallet, you check out, it crosses your name off the list. You know, Jeffrey Herman just bought, um, just bought his head cover. What is the... Because it's a common question, and I don't see it answered. And if you don't want to answer it, that's fine. Yeah. What's the floor of an NFT? Like, what's the cheapest NFT you can get on a swag? And then what's the most expensive that you've seen traded? Um, our floor price right now, which is the floor price is the, the least valuable one. Right. And it's not that it's the least valuable. It's the amount of money that someone is willing to take for what they've purchased. Yeah, it's supply. Well, not say supply and demand. It's the, the yeah. value to somebody. It's value to somebody. Yeah. So um, that's the floor price. Right now is like 0. 0.25 or 0. 0.28 Ethereum. And Ethereum is currently trading at uh, $1,700. So 400 if my math. So 400, call it, call it 75. Call 400. it 400 bucks. Yeah. Um, the most expensive I've seen traded, we had one or two sell for eight ETH. So, um, you're talking 12 grand at 12, 12, 12, 13,000. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And those are the one of ones that give them access to a special room and in time is going to give them some really desirable utility. Cause I think for the casual person who doesn't know about nfts or really swags nfts mm -hmm. what does it cost and i think sometimes that's good information yeah know. it's 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 four it's usually hovers between three and five hundred dollars what do they start at the same we sold them all for 0.1 eth and ethereum was at i think 1200 bucks at the time so 100, 120 bucks. 120 bucks yeah. which is about what we sell a head cover for yeah and then we did a second we we sold a bunch and then we held some back because people were having a hard time understanding the project and didn't want to see it, but we didn't want to just cut it off. So we, we minted a bunch and put them in a wallet. We called the gumball machine. <laughs> and then four months after we had released and after we had released utility and people got it and understood, yeah. then we released the gumball machine and we sold those at 0.3 Ethereum each. Okay. So about at the time, I think it was about, uh, ETH was at about 1100. So, so about 300, 350, 350, so. somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your role now with Swag? So it, it's an interesting role. Um, Nick, so to finish up on earlier, I did the NFT project. It went off great, huge success. Everybody's happy. Everybody understands. Um, other golf manufacturers are now looking at our project as, hey, how did you guys do that? Um, I got invited to speak at NFT NYC. I got invited to speak at NFT London. Again, at NFT NYC this year. 
uh, because of the way that we're using token gating and NFTs to for high demand drops. Um, like that's a, that's something a lot of people have their eye on, and we've done it really right. And we've got some stuff brewing right now that's going to take it to a completely different level. So so, but my role now is chief technology and community officer. So um, Nick told me, uh, look, you've got your finger on the pulse of the community. We want you involved in that because people like interacting with Mr. Doug and, yeah. and they, they, you know, and it, I, I'm a straight shooter. I don't really bullshit people. Um, so if I don't know the answer to something, I'll go find it out. Um, if I can't tell you, I'll tell you, I can't tell you, but yeah. I'll tell you soon. So like, I like mixing it up with the people. I like the genuine connections and connecting people and like, Hey, this guy here is looking for this. Um, you know, can you help him out? Like making those connections. Um, so my role today, you know, it doesn't, there aren't a lot of golf companies that have CTOs, certainly not the size of swag. Um, but there are some things that we're doing right now that you'll see in the next year that it'll all make sense. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, your recent Las Vegas trip? I don't need to know how many people, but yeah. what it encompassed. No, there were, there, we, we said when we were out there, there were over a hundred people. Um, so rewind to August of last year, we did a event in the Ozarks for kind of, I don't want to say our top collectors cause that's wrong. It was like our top ambassadors. So it was the people that were the most impactful to the brand. And, uh, we did an event for them and they got really cool goodie bags that had some stuff in it that you couldn't have ever bought stuff that we'd never made before. And, um, and a lot of people were like, you know, what do I got to spend to get in on that? And the truth be told, it wasn't always about spend. Like there are guys that are out there making videos about us every week doing cool stuff. Um, and much like I was, you know, 18, yeah. 18 years ago where yeah. I was just making a website to be cool. You know, I never got invited to any exclusive Cameron event. No, like there was a, an event that they did in Vegas you know, nine months after that a bunch of my moderators got invited to that I didn't get invited to. Yeah. So like this was, this is kind of swag doing their own thing like they always do. Um, so we did that event in at Big Cedar and had a lot of fun with those guys making connections. And that was uh, a thing we did in connection with AM golf trips. And it really helps build your community. With community. Yeah. yeah. It's all about community. Um, and so a lot of people were like, I would love to do something like that. So we said, okay. So we put together an event at uh, Las Vegas. Um, it was two days of golf, uh, three nights of hotel, I think, or two nights, of, three nights of hotel, two nights of golf, um, plus who knows what. Um, and we put a price tag of $5,555 on it. Um, round one was at Paiute. Round two is at Shadow Creek. Uh, so we brought the big guns on courses. Like you can't just walk up to Shadow Creek and play around. Like yeah. that's an invite. That's or you had to lose your ass in the casino the night before. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I've been to a lot of really nice golf courses in my day that I couldn't wait to get off of about the 16th hole because I was just miserable how hard it was or whatever. No, not you. Uh, Isn't the term... Bip sick. Is that Doug Hardman creative? No, or is that somebody else? John Sharon created that one. Ball in pocket, sitting in cart. Yeah, that, that was, was, that was, I mean, that was that kind was, of a good was, thing by 13th, 14th holes. It was, yeah, a lot of John, Bipsick yeah, John up. Sharon came up with Bip sick. It, yeah. it may not even have been him. He was the one that told it to me. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so we did this big, huge event in Vegas. We had, there were 100 people there, including our partners. We had a lot of people that paid for a ticket. Some people, um, uh, you know, got invited because they were like our partner, like Patron, like we do their golf stuff. So there were Patron people there. Um, uh, Paige and Claire are, you know, Instagram influencers and ambassadors. They were there. Like, so people like that were invited to hang out with and, yeah. and mix it up. Uh, the goodie bag included uh, four head covers that were all real deals. So they were all real leather. First time we'd ever released a set of uh, dollar bills it, that were leather and driver and fairways. Um, and then a real deal putter head cover. You could pick blade or mallet as you showed up to the course. 
Um, there was an Oak and Oscar watch, uh, GMT watch that was a swag watch we had made uh, with a melting skull on the back of it and the word swag is on the front with a Horween leather strap. Uh, there was a Peter Millar shirt that you got, uh, a milled ball marker. Um, I know I'm forgetting something. Oh, a hat that we'd never done before, a G4 hat. Uh, lots of goodies. Um, while we were on the course, they were the head covers that the people had gotten an hour earlier were selling for two thousand dollars a piece on the facebook pages while we were at shadow creek still golfing okay because i saw people were selling them already for i saw a yeah. post on there was it also an option to buy different head covers while mm. you guys were playing oh there was yeah there was that on the 17th hole there was a set of head covers that we made only for people that wanted to buy a Shadow Creek set of covers. And we had okay. to get a permission from Shadow Creek, MGM, and um, it wasn't, I, I could be wrong here. I don't think we were allowed to like give it away because it was a Shadow Creek thing. Yeah. I, there's, there's, there might be something there. Some. Yeah, I think, it, I think it had to be sold for that reason. I could be very wrong about yeah. that. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to Swag Has Your Swag events coming up this year. Yep. Explain to uh, anyone listening, anybody watching, um, what those are about. I know some of them are sold out already. Most of them, I think, are probably sold out by the time. But this what are they on. about? Obviously, this will be a continuous thing for years. But what is this about? Is this a competition? Is it just? It's a little bit of both. So, you know, Las Vegas was kind of a bigger version of what these will be. These will be smaller versions of that. Those were. Vegas was, um, you know, this times five. Uh, but the swag series is, uh, it's, we're doing it in partnership with AM Golf Trips. So AGT does an awesome job on golf events. If you've never been to one, they run one hell of a tournament. And the swag series is going to be, I think it's 12 or 13, I'm pretty sure it's 13 now, events across the U.S., across the season. and you can enter for gross or net. Um, so if you just want to go there and have fun, you can have fun. You if you want to go there a and compete, or some you, type yeah, of you need a you need system. a yeah, you need a gin number okay. um, to play in the net. No sandbaggers, please. No sandbaggers. Uh, but they run an event, and you win. We give gift cards away uh, for the winners of the event, and then the winners of each event advance to play for the swag championship, which will be back in Big Cedar. Um, I think it's in August or September. What is the cost? If, is it by course? Is it different? It's by course. Uh, they're between $777 and $999. Per team? Per team of two. Okay. Yep. Just so people know. Per team of two. Yep. All right. Um, I don't want to get into Swag's directions because I don't want to spoil. Um, <laughs> they don't tell me enough. So uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I know nothing. But certainly, I think we'll get to that down the road. Um, some kind of generic questions, but let's let's fire away here. What's the best swag putter you have seen? Uh, I can't tell you yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, right now I'm gaming a handsome one and a handsome two. I think they're both phenomenal. My favorite is something that has yet to be released. Okay, so we got that coming. Yep. What's your if you, uh, listen? You've got thousands here, but if you had to pick one head cover that's your favorite, I what can't. Would be? I can't. Um, and that's the God's honest truth. I've had, I've got different favorites for different reasons. I didn't start collecting swag head covers until I got involved with the NFT project. Um, and I did that on purpose. Like I had just been out of golf. I wasn't yeah. into it. Oh, I know. I played um, seven holes with you. You played seven. Ago. Yeah. I played seven holes the year before, <laughs> literally seven holes of golf. I played in, in 20 and the year prior we played in, 40 degrees pouring rain. Uh huh. Yeah, it was. I, I've not had a good couple of golf seasons. Um, I wasn't a collector, but I knew the collector mentality. And as I was building the project and built the Discord up, I knew that I wouldn't have legitimacy if I wasn't, you know, putting my own money on the line with this too. So, like you see all these behind me, I bought most of these. Um, sure, I've been given a bunch by, you know, by working there and, yeah. you know, Part of my payment for the NFT project for doing it for them was merch. 
Mm. So like a lot of the ones that I was given up here were given to me as payment for, you know, doing, doing the project. I love, and listen, I'm old, but I love, like, I, I'm just laughing because I see the California raisins. And I remember yeah. when you guys launched that. People it hated on that cover. It, but it instantly triggers, yeah. like, incredible. And listen, if you're 20, you have no idea probably what that is. Yeah, no idea. Um, but for us, the Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah. It's hysterical. I'm surprised even Nick knows, because uh, Nick's significantly younger than us, too. Not, but, not significantly, but uh, he, he remembers Garbage Pail Kids. But, like, I see those, and I literally just laugh. I think some of the feedback I get from people is, your stuff is too hard to get. Yeah. How do you guys combat combat that with It's a, listen, I know it's a fine line. You don't want to have too much. Yeah. But you don't want to piss so many people off where you're like, listen, I'm not even following. Listen, I've got friends who are in my golf league and people I know who love you guys, but say I don't even follow them anymore because I know I can't even get it anymore. Yeah. It's a it's here's the thing. Everybody wants us to make just enough so that they get one but nobody else does. And listen, guys, I'll be honest. I've yeah. known Doug and Nick for years. I don't have any of this stuff. So no. I'm not calling in favors to get stuff yeah. either. And that's, and that's the thing. Like, there are a lot of people that know Nick, and his phone blows up. Yeah. Like, these three covers went on sale at the same time. Okay? Sold out in 45 seconds. Sold out in 45 seconds because we had 3,000 people on the website trying to buy 50 of this head cover the flipper right 90 of this head cover yeah and i think 60 or 70 of this head cover so we got less than 200 or less than so there are most of them super limited i know you said earlier that some are more see. than others some are more than others we post the numbers uh 60 days after release we post on the website um how many of everything that we made not including the one of ones and the one off people know that right. those are the only one that we've made of that yeah um but uh, yeah, we, I can look up any head cover or a lot, I should say, cause I've got a lot of strange stuff. Many of these head covers, I can go on the website and it'll show me exactly how many of them there are. Like the Santa skull one, which is over there with the green at the bottom and the red hat. I think it's Santa. I'm assuming it's Christmas theme. Well, that would be, uh, that would be Jack Skellington. Yeah. So there, or Jack so, Skellington. Sorry. Yeah, Jack so Skellington. There you go. Um, the only one I don't love, um, obviously is the one that hits home is, Unless the Cubs Nick, cover? Yeah, the Cubs. I mean, <laughs> Nick, Nick can burn all the, uh, the anti-Cleveland ones, but listen. <laughs> right. uh, so a couple years ago, you and I golfed, and you said, hey, Nick, sent, sent us something. I'm giving you something. And right. if I was a betting man, I said, that son of a bitch is sending me the Cleveland-Chicago one just right. to kind of rub it in my face. And it didn't. Obviously, it was a Kool-Aid, which is a joke for a yeah. number of years ago. Yeah. Um, where do you guys see expansion just within i mean do you think at some point you go to retail market or you think everything will be always done in-house at some point it's hard to tell like there's this balance that um that i hear talked about a lot in the office is you know if we make too many of something it's not cool anymore if we don't make enough people get angry because they <laughs> back to they, the fine line yeah. back to because they can't buy it yeah if we give special treatment to too many people then nobody's special and if we, uh, if it lasts on our website more than 90 seconds, then it's obvious that no one likes this design, so I'm not going to buy it. I guess, like, okay, so let's explain to people, and I, and I don't know the name, so I apologize, Nick. Um, the pink guy with the teeth. The pink guy with the teeth. Booster. Yeah. So explain to me the story of Booster, because I see Booster gets... I would say lost and found. You got to find. So yeah. Explain to me the significance of that. If we were at my office right now, I could show you the other two head covers. Okay. So this was a Christmas release a couple of years ago. And there's the movie Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. And the entire movie is him trying to find Turbo Man for his son. Yep. So we did a Turbo Man head cover. And we did the Arch Nemesis head cover. So the special, I think, was the arch nemesis. So, but the joke, the running joke during the movie was you could always find Booster. 
like his 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 faithful uh, oh. saber tooth tiger. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's where that yeah, his faithful that. yeah, and, and that so that's the joke in the movie is that you know every every store that Arnold goes to, he can always find Booster, his faithful saber tooth tiger, but couldn't ever find Turbo Man, and so we made very few Turbo Men. And then we made 700 of these. <laughs> <laughs> and they, Hence the joke, you can always find. You can always, yeah, somebody always has a booster. So uh, we, uh, this was before my time. So I say we as in, the, yeah. in the royal sense, not the, not the I was involved with this at all, because I wasn't. Um, but uh, so then some, some guys in the community started what became uh, called Boosters Mafia. And they were uh, pumping up boosters. So they would buy up all the boosters they could, or they would promote booster as the coolest cover or whatever. So it turned around and then they would start taking pictures of booster in different places. So then swag did a contest, you know, have booster will travel or something like that. And so we made a bunch of one of one boosters that we gave to, the winners of a contest of who could take a picture with Booster in the craziest place. Is that one a one of one, or is that the, the normal? This is the normal. There's there's seven so, there's seven hundred of these. Guys. I don't know if people can see it uh, on the camera or not, yeah, it's but furry, it's fuzzy. Yeah, it's, it's fuzzy it's, on the inside and the outside. It was so the first. It was it's the not first... like something you can leave outside in the rain. He'll look pretty. There, I've seen some rough looking boosters. Yeah, I would imagine. I've seen some rough looking boosters. Yeah, uh, but Booster turned into a movement. Literally, like people wanted more booster stuff. So we did Booster King. We did Booster King as a driver. We did a Booster Putter, but it was Booster Kong. Like we keep doing this booster stuff. And it's funny that it was, it started out as us trolling essentially our, our, mm. our community. And it turned into them trolling us. And now we have to make more booster stuff because people can't get enough of So booster. that's the story of Booster. That's the story of Booster, yep. Yeah, you've got some really. I, Interesting covers. The one with the yellow, almost to the right of that one, with the orange shirt. No, no, with the orange shirt and the swag hat. This and, guy. Yeah. This was the. This was the. Don't give a putt. Uh, this is a uh, a call out to Super Mario Three. So it's kind of like a skull Mario. Uh, we did for a eight bit putter that we released uh, this last year. So you needed to buy the putter to get the head cover. So I found somebody that had the. Wanted to sell the head cover, so got the head cover. That's pretty cool. So on social media, obviously Swag Golf, there's Swag Tour. Um, yep, Swag Tour, and then there's Don't Give a Putt, which okay. is our tour concierge. So um, Don't Give a Putt is the is our version of what Nick Venson was for Fettinardi. So if I want a tour putter or I want a custom putter, I'm not a tour putter, I want a custom Yeah, we, putter. we don't do a lot of customs. Uh, but all of the high end stuff. So think of it as the, um, all the unique stuff, all the tour stuff. Like we have an actual tour rep. His name's Nate and he goes out on tour. Yeah. Um, uh, we have those tour players that we, we have, and we have somebody on the corn Ferry tour as well. Um, uh, Scott Tridal, you know, Scott. Yeah. yeah so Scott's our, our corn Ferry uh, rep. Um, and then don't give a putt is Adam Gardner and Adam is a longtime friend of Nick's and I uh, was big in the Bettinardi scene and is now our uh, guy that has the cool stuff. Is it hard to break through on the tours? Obviously being a newer brand. I know people listen, uh, was it Jordan Spieth or Justin Thomas? One of them had the swag red, white, and blue head cover from, yeah. I think, the Ryder Cup or President's Cup. From the Ry Ryder Cup. And yeah. Rory or Tiger, I think. I think it, was it was Rory. Rory was he walked up and looked at it yeah, right on like, screen. He's this? like like this, you know, twirling it around on screen. So it, it's interesting, um, you know, to break through, you know, you can't really just do a head cover deal. You have to do a putter deal. Right. And, and you know, for us... And really, let me back up. I shouldn't say for us. I should say for tour players, they get very particular about little things. And so they're not going to play some brand new brand that they've never heard of because... That's what I'm saying. There's yeah. a relationship that you have with your putter. Yeah. And Jeff, all of this comes back to that. Everything I've been talking about for the last hour yeah. comes back to 
people have a relationship with their putter. Don't you? People don't, you don't have think, a relationship with their driver. No, that's what I was going to say. That changes every year, twice, three times a year. Same thing with irons, two, three times a year. Some people will switch. They'll keep the same putter in the bag. And that's what I was saying. So I think years ago when you started all this, and I think, and I go back to my initial conversation with you was, I think confidentially saying this, I don't know if the other guys in the world are there. Putters weren't really talked about 20 years ago. Right. They were, if you spend more than 50 bucks, you were almost looked at like you were nuts. Right. Scotty came by, built it up. <coughs> a lot of people followed suit. But the branding of a putter and the personality of a putter mm -hmm. was nowhere where it was 20 years ago today. Today it's, I mean, we can look around, mm -hmm. but there's thousands of putters that people love and they'll never get rid of. Mm -hmm. But like you said, People go through irons and wedges and drivers like, eh, okay, it's, it's newer technology. I don't care. And there's no there's no relationship at all with that. That's the thing for me that makes putters so special. Um, you can play the same putter for 30 years. Yeah. You can't, you know, you give me a 30-year-old driver, I'd snap it in half on my backswing. Like, technology there changes. Technology changes in the putter too, but over there right next to you, there's a hickory shafted putter. I could go play around with that putter today. It still may like it more than... I, well, I may like it, I may not, but it, yeah. the, the swing is still that fast. It's not 180 miles an hour like, like it is with a driver now. Yeah. So it's the same. So you can play with a ping answer from the 1970s. You can play with an Odyssey 2 ball from 1999. You can play with a Scotty Cameron from 1996. You can play with a swag putter from, you know, 2018. Yeah. You can play with anything. And if you form a connection with that particular putter, that putter can stay in your bag a long time. How many years has Tiger been playing that same Newport well, tube forever. that's now missing yeah. all of its paint? It doesn't say Titleist anymore. And he won't let him put the paint back in. Um, doesn't have its cherry dot anymore. You can't see, it's just a silver putter. Two? But he's got, what, 11 majors, 12 majors just with that putter. Um, so going forward, what do we expect to see from you guys with the swag series? Are you going to be at every event? Are there swag people? We will have employees at every event. It won't be me. I can't, <laughs> I can't do all of them. Um, Are I, you playing in any of them? Um, I will attend... Probably five or six, maybe. Should I take your, your name off my sign-up sheet then? Yeah. For a couple of no, you could. You could. I'd play with you. Um, I, I'll probably, um, if there's space available, I'll play, but I'll certainly be there at probably five or six. I haven't decided which one. we got to sit down as a company and decide who's going where because we need to have somebody at all of them. We have a few people that will be at all of them. And then there's a smattering of us that, you know, there's enough people that have said, hey, I'm going to this. I'd really like to meet you. So I'll fly out to there and, you know, putts around. And, and, how, and how is your golf game doing right now? Um, well, I just got all new, uh, all new irons, all new wedges, all new woods. Um, and I am dialing in my swing to a point where I feel good and I'm having fun. I had, I, I played Shadow Creek. You know, I'm not a great golfer. I, you know, I Listen, shoot. he's being humble. I, we I, played, one of my favorite stories of you, and you know, probably know where I'm going with this. Oh, yeah. So we played a course around here called Little Mountain. It was the only five-star golf course in Ohio years ago. It's still a nice course. The conditions yeah. aren't, aren't as pristine, but still a great course. Um, there's a ninth hole. It's like... Uh, 345 yards yeah it's a par four yeah but it's you hit a rocket yeah to the front of the green yeah and 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 doug weighs 150 pounds soaking wet <laughs> starts flexing on the rest of the group yep talking shit to the rest of the group right my man took an eight on the hole i took an eight on the hole <laughs> after basically driving to the fringe yeah um i drove the fringe and got a got a snowman yep. yeah yep. um so that was a good story so just some rapid fire questions and we'll wrap up here. Yeah. Um, anything you want to add before I get into this with swag or not with swag, it, you know, it, again, I, I think all of this community and all of this industry is very much community driven and this doesn't happen in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Like Jordan's didn't get popular 
you know, the way that they have now without people collecting them the way that they collect them. Like when Jordans first came out, we were all wearing them. Yeah. I mean, Nobody I had them. I had the, I don't know if you did. I had the first ones. Yeah. You didn't put yeah. those in a box. You put them on your no, feet. You wore them out to literally. And you could jump that much higher and you were going to let everybody know that you touched the net. Yeah. Yeah. It, so that was, that was what happened there. And you know, it's an interesting read, uh, shoe dog, uh, Phil Knight's autobiography. Like that's a really interesting read about consumer habits, driving consumer spending married with collectability. So I love that you guys don't repeat your designs. Well, and you're not, you're not alone. And oh no, I agree. That's where the success of swag comes from. It comes from the success of other companies as well, but we're just taking it to a level that nobody else took it before. Yeah. And you know, my hat is off to Nick and it's, this is on the story on the website. So I'm not speaking out of, out of school here, but no one was asking for a new golf, no new putter head cover company in 2018. That was the last thing anybody wanted. And he comes out with this stuff with crazy high stitch counts, crazy high quality, and crazy colors, crazy colors, yeah. magnetic enclosures. That's okay. So that's what yeah. I was going to say was, so if, if any, yeah. if anybody's listening and you like a design, I'll say one thing that's very difficult for me to ever, um, go back to. Velcro. Is, yes. Yeah. So you can go into something as simple as you have a magnetic head cover mm -hmm. and then you go to Velcro and you're like, man, this is archaic. Yeah. And they even, listen, I have these. There's in nothing my worse office. than lining up for a putt and someone else in your group goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, not only that, but I have like even the old putter talk ones. Yeah. You feel the difference between the putter talk head cover. Right. And your new, and any of your swag or your new ones. It's right. incredible the difference. Yeah. There, there's a, it's so funny. Like I was down at the factory a couple months ago. And we were going through and they were, this is when I had just started officially at swag and they were taking me, like, I wanted to learn what everybody in the whole company did. Yeah. All, all places, all of our sites, all of everything. I wanted to yeah. meet everybody, shake hands, kiss babies, you know, become one of the people, but learn their jobs, learn what, what function they have. And maybe there's something that hits my brain at some point that I think of something I can make their life easier by using technology. But I was shocked at the amount of technology that goes into an analog thing like a head cover and the processes and the care that goes into making every single one of them. I didn't have anything close to a clear understanding of how much effort it takes to just make a head cover and why they're expensive. Like they're expensive because they're all handmade. Like someone sewed this head cover together. Like, this isn't a made in overseas product. This is all made in Buford, Georgia. Yeah. Um, all of it. hundred percent from the, like everything is made in that, in that facility. Mm. Um, you know, obviously we don't make magnets there, <laughs> but, but like all the raw materials come in and this is produced there. And, a human being, you know, yes, a machine makes this part, you know, but a human being is operating the machine and then they go on to step two and then yeah, step no three one's and step four and step a, five. A needle. No. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this <laughs> is probably, for a year. this has 60,000, probably 80,000 stitches in it. Um, but anyway, like the amount of tech that goes into this, like making little improvements about how the magnets attach to the insert attached to the exterior, you know, different thread tensile strengths, like all that stuff goes into account just to make this head cover that gets sold. They're all stunning. I think the only hard part for someone like myself is you don't want them, you don't want to ruin them. And I think that's the, I have, listen, I have taken an People are probably laughing, but I literally have taken waterproof stuff to some of mine. There, there are people on on that you know in our community that that have that spray stuff yeah. that do it for people. Like they're afraid to do it. I'm a nut. Like I got a head cover like this uh, this blizzard skull. Like I bought this, and it was yeah. That would never see the outside of. Well, no, somebody had gamed it, and it was a little it was a little dirty. Yeah. Um, I threw it in the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> I literally tossed it in the washing machine with two towels. It came out looking like this. I, 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 
put something here um, to hold it open for to probably dry. to dry out for yeah. like 48 hours and it's good as new. But this is a 2018 pink tag um, cover that. Oh, so explain to us because I don't, I, that's something new to me. I don't know what that even means. 2018 was pink tags. Uh, 2022 was blue tags. Yep. Okay. 2022 was blue tags. Um, there are green tags and yellow tags. Uh, and then our new tag color is black with pink uh, That's on the inside. Annual. That's an annual thing. Yeah, every year in January it, it flips. All right, so before I get out of here, yeah. I'd be remiss to talk about a new club Okay. that Swag has put out, a wedge. Yes. What is the story on wedges, and when can I start ordering irons and wedges from you guys? Um, I can't talk about, <laughs> I'll just say this, and this is all stuff that Scott said when we were presenting the person that won the, the wedge. Yeah. Uh, we gave away our first wedge uh, to somebody that won a chipping contest in Las Vegas. Um, and so the lead up to that, Scott was telling people, look, this is something we've had in development for a few years now. Uh, it just hasn't been the right time yet. And, you know, I look at my desk at, at Swag's headquarters is here. The guy that sits behind me um, has a dozen 3D models and stainless steel versions of it on his desk. Like, it just hasn't been right yet. And uh, we think we got it right now. Um, yep. All right, here's some quick rapid fire, and then we'll get out of here. Favorite yep. course of all time? Uh, Shadow Creek last weekend. Wow, that's quick. Um, uh, I, I, I've never... Like, there have been many times when I've had, like, really good rounds. Over Sandridge? Yes, far and away. It, it was like... Um, you said, like, Augusta, but that Augusta without you could play. 50, 000, yeah, every time I've ever been to Augusta, there's been 100,000 people also there. So yeah. everywhere you look is beautiful, but it's full of people. Yeah. This was... We were the only 100 and some odd people on that golf course. We, mm -hmm. we owned the course for the day. They'd never done an event our size before. We were it. And... I could have played 36 without skipping a beat. Like I started, we started on hole number two. I was in the second group. And so our last hole was hole number one. Mm. And I looked at the other guys. I'm like, replay? <laughs> like, can we just keep going and do do two through 18 again? All right. So what's your favorite hole? Not only on that course, of, of, any, of any course you play, what's your, do you have a favorite hole? My favorite hole uh, on any course is uh, hole number three at Sandridge. Okay. Um, that's a hole that, at your tee shot, you're looking at, I think, 20 bunkers. And oh, the par five. It's a par five. And you look back and you don't see anything. If you're on the green and you look back, you can't see a single bunker. It looks, very, it looks like a big carpet. It's yeah. a very cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a Tom this. Fazio design. It's a fantastic course. Super. Okay. Least favorite course you've ever played. Uh, and don't say where you live. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, not this. Um, least favorite was, what's it called? Thunder... Thunder Hills. Thunder Hills. Oh yeah, you lose six thousand balls. Yeah, it was a it was a also a fishery at yeah. one time. So all of the all of the water hazards are full of like fish. It's a gorgeous golf course, but you will literally want to quit golfing altogether playing it's it. It's so it's so narrow they and made one called Little Thunder yeah, ten, twelve years it ago when they was, closed it, was, it too. I, I think I I was eighty on the front nine. It was yeah. it and was, probably sixty balls. Literally, you can go through. You can go through balls all day there. Yes, yeah, you slice there. You had to slice two fairways over to hope you could find it. Yeah, gorgeous, but very difficult. Yeah. Okay, uh, what's your best score ever of all time? Uh, I shot an eighty-six with my dad and my grandpa uh, and my brother. We were playing Mayfield every year. We would do an annual uh, an annual golf thing, and it was right when I was playing golf on a weekly basis and all that. And I think I shot 86 at Mayfield. Uh, I'm not I, a great golfer at no, all. No, I would say what's your worst score, but I think I've seen some of it. So I, Yeah, I put up a 105 last week at, uh, at Paiute. So. Current putter. I think you showed me. but Current putter is between that handsome one and that handsome two. Uh, the way that that handsome two, per, I, I'm not, I, I typically like soft rounded bumpers and have been that kind of a guy. Uh, the, the handsome two I took with me to Shadow Creek, I used the last 12 holes, and I was putting my brains out with it. So, All right. Um, any hole-in-ones yet? Never. Um, Not even close. I'm going to... Closest gonna... I got, I got an albatross once, and I was the only person that saw it. I was out by myself. Then it didn't um, happen. 
Yeah, no one. I, yeah, so it didn't happen. I got, I got sure. back to the clubhouse. <laughs> I, was, I was walking nine. It was at Mayfield. Uh, it was the seventh hole. And I, it was a par five. And I drained my, my second shot. And I ran up to the clubhouse to tell Charlie Wood, the, the golf pro, and he's like, did anybody else see it? I'm like, nope. He's like, then it didn't yeah, happen. Yeah. <laughs> so Charlie's a good guy. Um, yeah. Dream foursome. You could play with anybody. Uh, it would be the my annual trip with my dad, my grandpa, and my uh, and my brother. And probably, from what I remember, yeah, your grandfather probably smoked everybody. He was awesome. Um, he was, tell tell everybody how he had his clubs. He didn't have six iron. He would have. No, he would have, it, it's so funny. He would have written on the shaft, he had tape that said the yardage for every club. Yep. And so, like he, we went out and he had like two eight irons with him. I'm like, grandpa, like two different brands. He's like, well, I hit that one 116 and I hit that one 125. Yeah, that's that's a great story. So that that's that's how he was. And he was, he never had any, the only brand brand name clubs he had was a set of orange dot ping I twos that he gave to me. But when he discovered you know, that he could build his own golf clubs, boy, he was off to the races. Okay. And that's what he did. Longest and shortest lived hobby. And I know what your shortest one's got to be. It's got to be your road cycle bike. My road cycle? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. My road bike. Uh, so I am a It looked great in your office. I don't know if it ever went outside. I am a hobby addict. Um, <laughs> I go from hobby to hobby to hobby. Uh, putters is my longest. Putters or sailing are my longest. But I've been in putters the most. Um, shortest live would be, yeah, my road bike. Um, I, I was, uh, I was like thinking, boy, I should exercise more. I could do road, road biking. So I told, I was married at the time. I said, Hey, Angie, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go, uh, buy a bike. And she's like, okay. So I go to that place on Mayfield at Golden Gate. Yeah. What's it called? I don't know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. There's something cycle, but I don't yeah. know. So I go there. And, and l let's, let's back up a little bit. So you buying a bike is not, and I'm in the same guilty as you are. Mm -hmm. We aren't buying a bike like the rest of the world is. The rest of the world is saying, I'm going to spend 300 bucks, see if I like this hobby, then I'll grow. You and I, complete opposite. We no, go in and say... I, I went in and said... Give me the top line. No, no, no. I didn't say that. I, I went into the bike shop and I said, how good of a bike can I get for $500? Because yeah. I wanted to be that guy that you just referenced and do this differently. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And he probably yes. looked, he goes, you know what? You could buy this bike and that's a good bike. But this one... Over here, see, this used to be four thousand dollars, but now it's on sale for eighteen hundred. You could have Lance Armstrong eat your dirt with this bike. This this was the bike. He's like, pick that up, and it weighed like four ounces. And I went, well, shit, of course I have to have that bike. I can't <laughs> right, have that. Right, right. That's what I mean. So I buy this road bike, and I go, okay. So I I got it fitted to me. I got it all set up, and got the pants, and got the shoes, and got the, the gloves, helmet. I got the helmet. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got the shirt with the pockets in the back. The snacks. The here we, in there. here we, Cliff bars. Yeah, yeah, I was ready to go. Uh, two water bottles. I was going to be a biker. I lived at the time in Shaker Heights in on Chadbourne. <laughs> you wanted to ride. For those who don't know, he wanted to ride to work, which was eight miles. How far was it? Is it that far? Probably. It was about fifteen minutes in a car. So let's call it. Let's call it. Yeah, probably ten miles. So for you bikers, you know, that's it's not, not a big far. Deal. Right. Not it, far. It's a warm up for a lot of you guys. I made it to Shaker Square, which if you're <laughs> if you're on Google Maps, Chadbourne Road to Shaker Square in four Cleveland, blocks. Ohio, four blocks away. It's a, I'm not a biker. <laughs> my butt hurt. I was on my it was this. I had a backpack on. This sucks. Turn around, go back. Drove into work. Then a couple of days later, um, uh, a buddy of mine was like, "Hey, we're going on a bike. We're, we're gonna go. You want to go ride?" I'm like, "Sure." So I drive to his house with my bike. He's like, "What are you even driving here?" I'm like, "Well, you live." You know, he lived at the top of South Woodland, which is all uphill. And he's like, y you're supposed to ride here. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, bu I, I okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, fine. So we, we ride our bikes all the way out to uh, Gates Mills from Beechwood, which, again, if you're Google mapping, isn't that far, but it's all uphill. And I was spent. And I think that was the one and only time. I think that bike might have like... It made it to your office. It made it to the office. I think that bike has 25 miles on it. 
It's still in my shed. It's in my shed. I, I, if you need, if you need a good body, go yeah, look them a up. A carbon fiber diamond back. I'm guilty as charged. Yeah, I yeah. owned a, a four thousand dollar specialized Roubaix that I rode maybe two hundred miles on. I thought I was the next Lance Armstrong, and I, I don't know how you are. I, re, I have relived the same thing. Oh, I can one up you right now. <laughs> I've got a Peloton about fourteen feet from us in the other room. That has the tenth of a mile that I put on it when they were <laughs> setting it up two years ago. They're making their monthly thing. Okay. They're making their monthly on me. Yeah. Um, were you a better skater or golfer? Uh, much better skater. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, behind me, and I'll show you guys, probably yeah. not with mic'd up, but I'll show you your Formula One setup. Not Formula One, but road racing. Road racing. Yeah. How yeah. often are you using this? I, that was my COVID project. So I'm a huge Formula One fan. And during COVID, they couldn't do races, so they would live stream the drivers um, in their sim rigs at home racing each other for fun. Oh, okay. And I thought, that looks like a lot of fun, and I wonder if I could do that. So I started researching, and I started buying stuff, and before I knew it, I've got a full motion, six-axis um, uh, racing simulator here in the basement, and I used the snot out of that for two years. Yeah. I was down here you know, eight hours a day racing people all over the world that were stuck in their homes. Too. You have the race car build too. Yeah. Like you could fit into it. Well, I, I tracked cars. So when I lived in Atlanta for a few years, um, I had a, I had a race car down there uh, that I would go at road Atlanta on a weekly basis or, or biweekly at least. And that was a lot of fun, but it was really dangerous and really expensive. So um I didn't want to repeat that, but I loved, I've always been into cars. I've always been into racing. Like there's half of an LMP one car, you know, here in my, in my basement. Um, the, the, the camaraderie of racetracks and car, car guys, like we all like hanging out and building and working on. Um, but with the sim rig, I can in five minutes sit down and be racing at Silverstone in England. Um, in a Ferrari and then five minutes after that be on an Indy car in Indianapolis and 10 minutes after that be in a Porsche GT3 at Road Atlanta. Yeah, that's pretty So cool. I can do all that from my basement and my pajamas and if I wreck, I press a button and it gives me a brand new car. Uh, most holes played in a day? Uh, 36. Okay. No, I'm sorry. 54. We did a replay at Sand Ridge one year and then we went out and played night golf. So that would have been 54 holes. And the night golf was fun. Night um, golf was awesome. What's the least amount of golf holes you played in a day? You had to at least start. Have you finished? Uh, there was the seven holes seven I played holes. with. Seven holes, yeah. 2021, I played seven holes of golf. Yeah. We were going to play nine. Uh, Jeff kept bugging me. He would say, hey, you got to let me take you out. Let's just at least get out once. Let's even play nine holes. And I got to finish the seventh hole and got a call from my boss, and uh, we had to keep moving. Yeah, that's an interesting. So, all right, last question. If you had to go back. 20 years, mm -hmm. what would you tell old Doug? Uh, I wish I would have stuck with uh, putters through this whole time and not had it be a hobby, but had that be my, my primary yeah. business. Um, seeing where social media is now versus where it was in its infancy back then, I could have done a lot more. Yeah, that's um, crazy to think about. Yeah, uh, that would have been a monster at this point, and it would have been just as fun. Although I will say I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now had it not been for the things that I did in the meantime. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not a big regrets guy. Um, I don't really, uh, what I would tell to my 20 year old self is don't sell that Bitcoin for a dollar 50 a piece. Um, uh, but I think, you know, we all take crazy journeys to get where we're supposed to be. And my journey has been all over the place. And, it's really awesome to think of where we are today as an industry and what a joy it's been to watch it progress over time into what it is today. Yeah. So, you know, my thing is now like the quality of the stuff that's being built today smokes the quality of the stuff that was being built, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, the five years ago. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Look at the, pick up a swag putter and look at, just look at the soul. Like, just look at the soul and really look at it. It's not ground down. It's milled that way. Yeah, I, like, I, I think what's interesting with, with their product more than anybody else's is, is 
you know, their standard putter line that's 555, am I right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're essentially getting tour like. Um, you're getting better than tour like. No, but, yeah. but I'm saying value wise. So people are looking yeah. at like, oh, $500 for a putter. You're literally getting. Scotty's cheapest putter is about that right now. Yeah. And then yeah. some. Yeah. yeah, it's a great. Uh, yeah, their off the rack stuff at at, at at PGA Superstore is six hundred bucks. Yeah, it, it's amazing what's happened. But listen, thank yeah. you for your time. Of course, appreciate it. Yeah. Um, anything else you wanna? Not a thing. Shout out to everybody. So I hope no. everybody enjoyed the last eight hours. Of, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs>